From family events, to volunteer opportunities, to community happenings, there is a lot going on in your community. Learn about all the possibilities and opportunities on this episode of Community Hotline. Hi, and welcome to Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel. We're here in Gresham at Metro East Community Media. With me tonight, my first guests are Sisters of the Road. In representing Sisters, I have Heather Dorfman. Heather is the Development Co-Manager of Sisters of the Road. And also as my guest is Bobby Fother, who is a teacher and artist at the Open Door Gallery. And we'll talk more about why you, in particular, are here tonight, Bobby. But first, Heather, if we could start out, I'd like to get a little background on Sisters of the Road. If you could tell me a little bit about, that, about your mission in the mm -hmm. community and um, maybe a little history. Sure. Yeah, so Sisters of the Road um, is in Old Town, Portland, and we've been part of Portland for over 30 years. Uh -huh. um, we Most folks know us by uh, the cafe that we run in Old Town, Portland, and that cafe um, mostly serves folks who are experiencing homelessness and poverty. Um, I'd say 99% of our customers um, are experiencing homelessness and poverty. And um, anyone can come to eat there, and we do charge a dollar twenty-five for meals. I think it's a pretty good deal. Yeah, <laughs> really good price. Especially because most of our meals now are made with local and fresh foods that we get from various community partners, um, and make some really amazing and delicious meals. And I've heard they're really good food. I know. Really good. Yeah. Well, you know, I've gone on your website, and I always look and see what yeah. they have. And today, I think it was grilled cheese sandwiches yep. and black bean and sweet potato That's soup. That's right. And I wrote it down because I thought I do <laughs> I do meatless Monday with my daughter uh -huh. every week. I thought. Good. That's what yep. I want to make next week. Yep. It sounds wonderful. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. People always get a kick out of seeing the meals that we I serve know. on our Facebook page. Because you have some really good stuff. Yeah. And what a great price. Yeah. yeah. And people pay for the price. So dollar twenty-five. We charge folks that because we feel like that's a part of respecting people's dignity, assuming that people can and want to pay and want to right. contribute. And so um, over half of the meals that are bought at, at Sisters are bought using barter work. So folks can come in, work 15 minutes, um, and that's enough to earn a meal and a drink. That's great. That's great. What so, kind of things do you have people do to, to earn that meal? Well, people literally run the cafe. We wouldn't be able to run the cafe mm, without our barter okay. workers and volunteers. So they come in and they um, serve drinks, serve food, serve at the steam table, wash dishes, clean up. Pick up the it's garbage, literally the floors. Exactly, yeah. all of it. Um, so that's regular service industry jobs. Exactly. It right. is. And for a lot of folks who come there, they come from the service industry. For whatever reason, they may have been out of it for a while, so it's a way to get back into working. Um, for other folks, it's a way to learn new skills. Well, sure, so, and especially maybe if you're a young person who's out on the street, yep. it may be your first job you've mm -hmm. ever had, and at least you've got something now to put on a resume. Or exactly. Backup, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And a lot of folks do ask people at Sisters to be a reference for them as they start sure. looking for jobs. So. Um, and then the other piece of Sisters that's just as important as our cafe is our systemic change work. And so that really revolves around making, um, working with folks who are, who are experiencing homelessness and poverty to be at the table when policy is being made. Because we believe that they know best what's needed to change our systems that create homelessness and poverty. Um, so through the trainings and workshops that Sisters offers, folks then go on to testify at City Hall, to go lobby mm -hmm. legislators in Salem. Um, and then a bunch of folks just went down to California and supported really? work down there for a homeless bill of rights. And we're actually working in coalition with a bunch of other folks to create an Oregon Homeless Bill of oh, Rights right great. now. So, and that's so great that's, experience too. That's right like there, a just social just change component exactly. to what goes on as well. Exactly. That piece feels just as important as offering a space for folks right. to come sure. in, feel safe, and get a good meal. Mm -hmm. Both sure. of those go together. So that's very important. Yeah. So you, uh, the, the people that come in, you have a lot of people that are just regulars there that right. are all, that are always there. Then that's is that true. Correct? And, yeah. and the thing I think I like best about Sisters is is the. Um, Everybody's treated with dignity and respect. Absolutely. Whereas, don't you don't you find that people that are that are homeless from the street tend to be invisible mm -hmm. to so many people? Yes. Like, yeah. You know, Unless they get directly in your face. Unless they do, and then it's not a good experience. Then it's right. a negative yeah. experience. Right. You know, and people are afraid. Right. Right. So many people who come into Sisters talk to us about this is the one place that I come to that people say hello, that know my name, that smile when right. they see me, and that I feel welcomed and loved. And it's 
it's wonderful to hear that. It's also really sad to hear that there's so few places where it people is. experience that. But it's a place where folks come and they really feel ownership of the community and they're a part of the community. And when things get tough, our regular customers will be like, you know, in Sisters, this is a safe space and it's a welcoming space. So this is a space that we keep calm and safe for everyone. So they're a part of keeping this community That's right. what it is. That's right. Yeah. I think I, I first mm -hmm. became aware of Sisters when I, I worked in Old Town and I uh, used to walk to work every day. I lived over uh, off of Burnside up on Southeast 28th and I'd walk to work every day or I'd take the bus but I'd always come across Burnside and there was always people sleeping, you know, in their mm -hmm. sleeping bags and I, I'd, you know, step over them and around them but, I, yeah. but I'd always say good morning and hello yeah. and eventually I'd get so I knew people, you right. know, and sometimes I'd learn their names, right. you know, and shake their hands, whatever, and it was, and then I then I'd run into them down by sisters. I thought, you know, this this was good for me right. because yep. it, you mm -hmm. know yeah. sort of woke me up to the fact that, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> people like everybody else they just hit some tough times right. and and everybody goes through them. Some are tougher than others. So, yeah. yeah, especially with the way that things have been going oh, lately. So many of us are paycheck away from that's being right. by ourselves. Yeah. So yeah, close. Right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So uh, one of the new things that sisters is doing is um, an art. Yeah. An art exhibit and exactly. art. What, tell, tell me about this, Bobby. You have been very instrumental in getting this going. Well, it's an art event, and I'm on the committee um, for the second time with a person who brought me in on another project that had um, arts for social change aspect to it. Brenda Morgan, who's the development director for uh, Sisters now, and it the basis is to bring people to artwork and bring all types of people to our work so that you get a view of the world from different perspectives. So not just the people that can afford expensive artwork, but mm -hmm. No, <laughs> because artwork should be ex accessible for everyone. It should. Yes. Yeah. So what's the plan? What, you, you have an event on May 18th. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And tell me a little bit about where this is and, and what's going on. Sure. Well, it's an uh, all-day show from 10, 10 till to 5. Till five. Yep. And it's at the Armory or the Girding Theater yeah. okay. or right. Portland right. Center Stage. <laughs> yeah. right. Whichever one you've been okay. to, yeah. it's okay. got a lot of okay. names to yeah. it. And we'll be in the lobby and on the mezzanine, and it's a beautiful building it with is. a beautiful space to show things. And beautiful. we're going to have lots of artwork, um, craft work, uh, accessible things mm -hmm. that people Good. can purchase. Good. Um, we have some expensive things too, but sure. we'll have a and lot have of everything. things where you can come and just support the event. Mm -hmm. Let me back up just a little bit because there has been artwork created by uh, people that are patrons of Sisters. Right. Or who, so tell me a little bit about that. You, yeah. you, I understand you have a, a storeroom of artwork mm -hmm. from like for years. Yeah. Tell, tell me about that. Yeah, well, I mean, actually, you could come into our cafe and see artwork through the ages mm -hmm. that customers have created and have gifted to sisters. Um, our, it's all over the walls in the cafe, and each piece is really important to us. And that said, there's been so much artwork created that some of it, we haven't, you know, we kind of rotate mm -hmm. what's up in the cafe. So we have a storage space where we've held on to artwork uh, because it all means so much to us. And literally through the three decades that Sisters has been around, we have artwork reaching back that far. Is it created there? Or is it created off-site? Where, where does the artwork come from? Do you both. have a space for creating it there? Well, both. Um, much of it, you know, you can come in and you'll see somebody sitting at the counter and drawing pictures, drawing portraits of people. So that happens sometimes. Sometimes folks bring in art that they want to give to us that they've created somewhere else. Um, and then projects. Also, sometimes you've had projects done. So do you, do you have art supplies and that kind of thing available we for do. people there? Yeah, okay. we've been doing workshops leading up to mm -hmm. the oh, event okay. Okay. Um, where local artists have come in and led people. Uh, there was a sort of a collage box making workshop. Uh, right. There was also a workshop where folks together collaborated to make a song, make two songs together. Oh. So we've been doing that as part you of know, the. I imagine if you're homeless. That is one, uh, one component, one of the many components that is probably missing from your life because you, if you don't have a regular space to create art or music or that kind of thing, that would be that would be really hard. It's well, a, it's, and it's so important to people. I mean, art is so important. It is to, central, to and it's life. amazing to see what our customers, folks, are really creative. So mm -hmm. they manage to often figure out ways to you know, use a pen and a nap and, and create art. But to get mm -hmm. to have access to other sorts of art supplies and to sure. people with other knowledge and skills that they can share mm -hmm. with each other is really important. You provided a few pieces of artwork yeah. here that you said are from the storage From the unit? storage space, Okay, I'm yep. gonna hold these up. Yep. And uh, Tony, maybe you can get a, a shot of this here. Yep. Oops, did I get, 
two here. I got two here. All right. Tell me about the, this piece, what you know about this. Um, you know, I this honestly very don't detailed. know a ton about each individual piece, okay. um, but I know that this, these all come from our community and it, they come from heart. Uh, a lot of feeling is put into each of these pieces, as you can see. That ha this has great detail in it. Yeah, this is it's very really beautiful. The it's colors the are water amazing. Color. It's watercolor? Yeah. yeah, it's watercolor. I was going to say, Bobby can probably speak to these <laughs> yeah. better than anyone. So this well, is no, one. I, the I don't know the, the all the details about mm -hmm. the actual theme, et cetera, et cetera, but it is a watercolor piece that's oh. on watercolor paper. So I love the detail The person of that did a beautiful. very good job oh, of that blending. Mm -hmm. Jacob Weed. Okay. Yeah, it's amazing to me, the vibrancy oh, of the colors. Lovely. Okay, now this one. This looks like oil pastel. Mm. Um, once again, it's on watercolor paper. I wish they were all signed and dated. Yeah, yeah. The dates would be very interesting to find out. It how would long, be nice to know how that. long these are. Yeah. Well, sometimes yeah. when people create, you know, a lot of times I found some of my work that I finished for a specific thing, um, and I frame it and I get it all put together, and it's like, and no one necessarily likes it, and then the piece that I <laughs> never finished, that's the one that that's people the one want. That's so a lot of people who come to those types of situations, they're. They're kind of doodling. Mm. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. In a um, sense. This it's just one that they have skills. This one is by Corinne from yeah. 1996. Yeah. So this one is older. Yeah. And is this a, it also, is it also, charcoal? Is it pen? Well, I would say it's charcoal. It kind of looks like oil pastel also. So. And I really love the, the laughing child. I know. It's you know, great. And, it's kind of exuberance you want, coming from. And you wonder when you look at it, is there a story here? Yeah, you know, and it was know. with any artwork. Yeah, there's, feel usually, that way. Yeah, yeah. there's usually a story behind yeah. it. And sometimes, you know, a piece like this, when you pick it up and look at it, it could have just been crayons that were on the table for wow. the day. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 That's pretty amazing. Okay. So at this, at this event, mm -hmm. at this um, what do you call this? An art art festival. Art festival. festival. Yeah. Art, festival. art festival. Yeah. Will there be food and entertainment, or is mm -hmm. it just all straight art? What what's what else going to be going on there? Yeah. Um, so it's at the Armory, as Bobby, mm -hmm. <laughs> as Bobby okay. mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, so their cafe will be open um, for folks to, you know, there'll be food there, but we'll also have music. Maybe Bobby can speak a little bit more to that. Mm -hmm. um, there'll also be interactive workshops going on. Okay. There'll be discussion groups. Um, there's just going to be there's going to be artwork for that that we'll be displaying from our community and then artwork for sale as well and you know meet, meeting with all kinds of amazing artists from right. the region. So. Okay. Right, because it is a fundraiser. Yep. Okay. Yes. Right. Persistence. <laughs> Absolutely. Sure. Yep. Yes. Don't um, forget that part. Right. Very good. Well, I know from the Open Door Gallery uh, we're going to have several things happen there. I have um, we're going to be doing some face painting. Two of my students will be par participating in that. And what the Open Door Gallery is, it's, uh, I teach in an alternative high school, McCoy Academy. Mm -hmm. So I opened a gallery in order to teach the students how to install, create the art, um, present an art show, et cetera, et cetera, so they could get those skills as oh, well. Cool. And out of that, we've been doing our own little grand openings, et cetera. Well, along with that came some students who actually had like vocal talent. We have one vocalist who's going to be at the event to sing. Great. And it's two wonderful other to students. discover those things. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. To, well, she was brave enough to say yes, <laughs> ah, number good one. For her. So that, good that's for her. really important. Yeah. And then two of my other students are going to do face painting. And they're fabulous artists. I have one of uh, yeah, the Yeah, you have some work. Um, work from a couple of your students here. Yes. This uh, is, is this, Elijah this Garcia. Right yes. Okay. Elijah Garcia's work. He's going to be one of our face painters. He's Great been colors. the most consistent <laughs> student for completing his assignments. Uh -huh. <laughs> and also, he's been one of the artists at the gallery who has sold several pieces oh, from our gallery. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So what happens when really the good. piece is sold? Does the money the go artist, to? The money goes to the artist, 20% mm -hmm. goes to the gallery. That's Great. our standard Great. for all of our artists at the gallery. Okay. And we have several artists. We have a couple of international artists who work with us, as well as some artists who, um, like Charlotte Lewis, who is deceased now, but we have limited access to some of her, uh, of her works. print work and some of her original work okay. to help the school. Good. Okay. We have one more by a student. This is a framed one, so it's a yes. little bit bigger here. Savannah Tidwell. I, I gave her her last assignment for this term, which was to complete three works for the art show. So she made all of these different pairs of earrings, and then mm. she finished those, and she said, well, I want to do a few more pieces. And this was one of them. And it was like, that's it's amazing. Yeah. So this is her work, which it's will also beautiful. be at our show. Wow. Good. OK. 
Good for her. Nice. How fun. Do you enjoy the teaching aspect of your The teaching your is job? very interesting. Um, it's my neighborhood, so I grew up in the neighborhood that I teach in, in North, Northeast Portland. Uh -huh. And so most of the kids there have an interesting view of teachers and what mm. they're supposed to be doing for you. Well, especially if well, they're in an alternative school, they've already gone to the regular right. schools. Right, and, and it didn't necessarily work for right. them. Right, that's why they're there, yeah. And back in the day, I would have been one of those students. So, because I was always busy and, and kind of bored in school and had my artwork to turn mm -hmm. to. So it's been interesting for them to understand what I'm teaching the way I'm teaching it. Because I'm using my real world skills along with the academic skills that they have to have in order to pass their classes and get their credits. Wonderful. And, and yeah. the kids, they know what this fundraiser is for and, and oh, yes. this is benefiting. And yes, they definitely know what that. it's for, who it's benefiting. Good, good. We have some other artwork that, mm -hmm. uh, well actually let's show some pictures first that we have yeah. that you supply. We have lots of good artwork yeah. today. So mm -hmm. let's take a look at some of the pictures. Uh, first we have some from um, Sisters where you're at, at the, um, at Sisters itself yeah. working it's on the during workshop. during a project. Yeah, yes. so let's yeah. take a look at during some of those workshop? first of all. Yeah, okay. okay. Okay, well this is uh, Chris and Jeannie and they're a couple of our staff members and they're working in Sister's Tiny Kitchen making some of that delicious food. They make mm. uh, about 225 meals a day in this tiny kitchen. Wow, yeah. <laughs> that's a lot. And this is some of the local fresh uh, produce that has been donated to Sister's. Yeah, a lot of donations. Yeah. That, huh? mm -hmm. yeah, and here's a view of the cafe kind of looking down so you can see it's a busy day. Folks sitting at the counter and getting ready to order a meal. And so now this is at one of the art workshops, and this is the one where they made sort of a collage box. Um, and a local artist, Sharon Geraci, um, led this workshop. And we had a lot of folks participate, and they seemed to really, really enjoy it and Fun. made some powerful pieces. Good. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> this is a couple other folks from Sisters. Um, you'll see a lot of hugs anytime you come into Sisters. <laughs> a lot of hugs really going on. Yeah. <laughs> It's really a space for people to come together, and a lot of folks, it's family. Yeah, so, I can understand yeah. that. So this is another picture of the art oh, workshop. Oh, that's Sharon. Yep, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this is one of our regular volunteers, Doug, um, and he is at Sisters and helping out all the time, and he participated in the art workshop and oh, got great. to you know, express this part of himself. Nice. Good. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Oh. Now, I want to show a couple of pictures yeah. here, too, that you brought in, and then we have a few more that we want to show mm -hmm. uh, on the air here. But you have all sorts of great artwork. Which should I just start with first? This one? Well, uh, the gallery uh, is being supported by several artists uh -huh. who uh, live in Portland and a few who don't live here, but uh, like one artist has sent me his work from Cameroon. Oh, wow. Which was really touching to me because we kind of met online through another person. Uh -huh. We talked for uh, like over a year. He does the same kind of social change through art okay. work uh -huh. with children. And so it's been nice to have that feature come to us. God. So okay. this Let's is this uh, Mufu Ahmed. He's an artist from Nigeria. And Mufu kind of surprised all of us with, he originally came to me as a sculptor. So I have all these wonderful sculptures oh. of his, metal work sculptures. Uh -huh. His work is out at uh, in North Portland at the community housing uh, space out there, etc. And yeah. so I asked him one day, we were needing speakers. He says, oh, I have speakers. And I said, what are you talking about? He says, well, I'm a singer too. <laughs> and he has CDs and everything out. Wow. So then another day, he has a beautiful, uh, oh, what's it called? Not tie-dye, but um, anyway, he has batik? beautiful club batik. He has beautiful batiks that he's done. Wow. He's uh, one of the few artists who knows some of the dying traditions of indigo dyeing. And then one day we're doing another thing. We said, well, we need some smaller pieces to put out. He says, oh, I have some smaller pieces. So wow. he brought out like so he 50 of these little drawings wow. on oh. ink. I love it. Wow. Right. I like ink drawings. We don't have a lot of time. So He's I from Nigeria, get through, by I wanna, the way. Yes, I want to get through some of these because there's some amazing work here. This okay, is Callie you know, which Hesh. Way, am I doing this right? Yes, you're okay. doing it right. I know. I Callie well, I can't Hesh see is, from back. Yeah. <laughs> no, Callie Hesh is from uh, California, but he lives here, and he's a... Um, Basquiat and Picasso are his mm -hmm. idols, so mm -hmm. to speak, you kind of tell in his work. So I mentor him. He's an adult artist. He's a, uh, most of all of these are adult artists. Adult artists. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right, now tell me about this picture here. This is Alice Price, whose mother brought her to me to kind of help support her. I mentor a lot of students, so I've had like 40 years of mentoring people wow. who are 
Good for you. Uh, a visual and performing artist. So this is one of her works she did for a show that we had up at uh, Artist Repertory Theater. Nice. nice. So we can see most of this at the at You'll the see event? this work okay. at the event. Okay. Tell me about this one. This is beautiful. This mm -hmm. is uh, the work of the late Charlotte Lewis. Uh, I have limited access to a series of her prints as well as a few of her original works, and we'll have those. And this is a limited the, print. Yes, and mm -hmm. she's pretty well known throughout, like she has murals up all around town, mm -hmm. uh, in Portland Police Department in North Portland. If you've been in the meeting room, there's her mm -hmm. mural I in have, there. I have, actually, yes. And she's done a lot of work. Um, right, she right. did a lot of community work in town. Mm -hmm. And then this is an original from this Charlotte. This is also oh. a Charlotte. Oops. Lewis piece that I actually one. used for our <laughs> yes. gallery festival last year. Um, Isn't that joyful? The girl in the yellow dress. Yes. And so she's been an icon for us doing this work, yeah. an inspiration for us. I don't, I don't want to put it down. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I know the event is going to be from what time to what time? From 10 a.m. to 5? To 5 p.m. Right? Yep. So it's an all-day event. It is. People can yeah. kind of come and go. Exactly. Um, we can't say prices on the air, but mm. can you just pay at the door or mm -hmm. or get tickets ahead of time? There's a suggested donation at the okay. door. Okay. But donation at the door. And the price range of things will be from $2 to 2000 It so depends it, on... There's you, something for everybody. There's something for everyone in there because we really are striving as to use art as a social change thing, and we want it accessible. That's okay. the most important piece of it. It's accessible to the community. Well, we're getting ready to close out this okay. segment. Let's show some of the rest of those pictures sure. that, that were sent, and maybe you could tell us just a little bit about those as we look at them. Sure. Um, there's some amazing, amazing artwork. Yeah. So let's see if we can pull that up on the screen here. Okay. So this is... Oh, Chris. <laughs> oh, <dang. laughs> oh, I'm no, sorry. Please. I didn't know who was in all of these pictures, so it's like... Yeah. So his photography will be shown at uh, ah. Journeys, and he is a part of Sisters Community, so it's going to be really exciting. Fabulous photographer. Okay. Um, this is yes, a, a quilt West. fabric artist named Alethea Devi. Am I saying that right? Do you know this? Yeah, it's Alethea. Okay. Beautiful. Um, oh, oh, this is oh, that's a amazing. bead that artist, and I am forgetting her name, oh, um, but it's incredible, and I've, all of her other pieces Moon? that we had pictures. I yeah, I mean, so, I think it's yeah. a big shell. Oh, my gosh, Yeah, it's really gorgeous. beautiful. I love that. Um, oh. This one you might be familiar with. Oh, no. <laughs> I was commissioned by... Uh, is this the, yours? Yes. yes oh. The um, Regional Arts and Culture Council had commissioned me to do a work for their portable works collection, so this is... You'll see this in different offices or wherever they ship it to around the oh, city oh, to be in different beautiful. buildings. That's I didn't wonderful. know that was up there. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> um, this is this one of the artists that you sent to that us. That looks as like well? Charlotte. I think work. so. Yes. The um, bright, bright colors and mm -hmm. the family sort of subject. It's very reminiscent of Charlotte's work. I'm not sure if it's exactly a piece of hers because she mentored several other oh, artists okay. around town also. But yeah, actually that does okay. look like her. Oh, that, and then that's again. me again. Aww. I have a series of note cards and Aww. stationary Aww. type items. That's what I use to help raise funds to, I've always raised funds with my arts uh -huh. to do projects with children. Mm -hmm. right. Right. And then Ooh. this is a uh, photographer wow. from the Geezer Gallery. I believe mm -hmm. his yes. name is George Ingram. Does that, okay. It rings a bell. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> and it's gorgeous. Oh, this is one of the gorgeous collage boxes created uh, by a Sisters Community member. Nice. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then we're also going to have Spin Your Own Yarn. A person from oh, Sisters is going to, yeah. yeah. A person oh, really? from Sisters is going to wow. teach folks how to spin their own yarn, wow. and you get to go home with your own spindle, so you can keep going. Uh -oh. So, yeah. That's great. It's going to be That's a really great. amazing day. Sounds like day. it's going to be a fun event. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Any last mm -hmm. things you want to share about Sisters or the event before I let you go tonight? Um, just that we hope folks can come out and join us, and uh, you can find more information about um, the event and Sisters online at sistersoftheroad.org. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you, both of you, Heather and Bobby, for being here today. Thank I've you. enjoyed hearing about it. i got to get down to Sisters for yeah. a meal sometime. Buck yeah. 25, oh, I think sure. I can afford that. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that, that sounds good. And you do have... Um, 
tickets like coupons available meal that coupons can, yep can that folks can buy for two dollars each and then if folks have asked you for a, um, some change and you'd like to engage with them you can give them the two dollar yeah. meal coupon I think that's a great idea yeah I think that's great. I've told a lot of people about that yeah. idea because it's you know yeah. so I don't know whether you know mm -hmm. it's a good way to hungry. start a relationship yeah they're gonna take it they're and gonna you know, yeah that's good okay thank you yeah thank thanks you. so much for watching this segment of community hotline and don't go away we'll be right back with the Gresham Sister City Association thanks My favorite thing about community media is how people find their voice and tell their story. It's the message of, by, and for a community. We're a gathering place because it gets people of all sorts of different backgrounds underneath one roof. It's art, it's technology. A snapshot of our community. Going live in three, two, one. The League of Women Voters makes history our country would not be the same without their dedication. Formed by women who organized to win women the right to vote. It is now a co-ed organization. Studying, informing, and acting. Nonpartisan. Grassroots. Influential. Taking political stands on many issues. The League of Women Voters encourages all citizens to be informed and active in government. Join, Join the, the League, League of Women, women Voters of East Multnomah, Multnomah County, County in, in making history, history today. today. Hi, I'm Luke Perry. You're watching Metro East. Over 25 years of great community media. is limited. No matter how great our intentions, on our own we can only stretch so far. But at Rotary, we believe the right group of people working together can make our communities, our world, a better place. Rotary. Humanity in motion. Están listos? Free GED classes. Are you ready? Classes gratis de inglés. Yo estoy lista. Transportation for free. I'm ready. Classes gratis de computación. Que listos. We're, We're ready. ready. Come to listos. If we can do it, you can do it. What am I supposed to do with all these corks? Turn them into a cork board. What about all these floppy disks? How about a fantastic journal? Hmm, I wouldn't learn how to make cool things like that. Well, come on down to Scrap. Scrap has monthly workshops where you too can learn how to make great things. We provide everything you need. For more information, call 503-294-0769 or go to www.scrapaction.org. Scrap, create more, consume less. Vienna Star was my guardian angel when my life was in shambles. They helped me find counseling and shelter. Vienna Star is great. They helped us pay our utility bills. And find health resources. I'm in college now because Vienna Star helped me find scholarships so I could put myself through school. Call 503-823-4000 to find out if Vienna Star can help you. Gracias, Vienna Star. 
What local community media is to us is literally our lifeline to what's going on in the lives around us. The absolute most important thing that happens in your neighborhood. People's local communities are usually what's most important to them. Because we're the faces, the smiles, the peoples, and the personalities of the community. To not only give people a voice, but to have their voice heard. Volunteers are the cornerstone of local communities, and they enjoy the satisfaction that comes from being part of something larger than themselves. Multnomah County invites citizens to participate in projects that benefit the greater good of our residents. Help provide services to thousands of your neighbors. Sound impossible? 1,700 members of your community are already doing this, and so much more, by volunteering with Multnomah County Library. Library volunteers help their neighbors by teaching computer skills, shelving materials, and promoting literacy in the community. The library provides a wide array of services, including lending popular books and DVDs, computer access, and life-enriching activities. Give a neighbor a helping hand and spend a couple hours a week at the library, making your community a better place. To find out more about this volunteer opportunity, visit their website. To explore other volunteer opportunities, contact the Office of Citizen Involvement. Shape your community. Hi, welcome back to Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel. We're here in Gresham at Metro East Community Me uh, Community Media. Where are we? <laughs> yeah, I think that's where that, we're. Is that it? Okay. <laughs> For our second segment tonight, we have with us the Gresham Sister City Association. There are several components of it. We're going to be talking about Ibitsu Japan, and uh, an event that's going to be going on here in Gresham. And we have with us Tamiko uh, Takeuchi, and you are the co-chair of Skosh which mm -hmm. is the event we're going to talk about. And Dennis Chappell, you are one of the team leaders. Yes. And we have uh, in kind of uh, brought both of you on board here and have done some work for Metro East as volunteers. So mm -hmm. it's good to see you again. Thanks. Yeah. So tell me, who wants to tell me a little bit first? Maybe, uh, Tamika, you can tell me a little bit about the Gresham Sister City Association mm -hmm. to start out with. We just celebrated, celebrated 35 years with wow. Ebitsu Japan. And it started, uh, well, in the 70s, obviously, Henry Kato, who was a local gentleman, he had a friend named Harada, and this gentleman was the, a teacher from Ebutsu, but his father was the mayor of Sapporo, mm. and Sapporo had just joined up with Portland. As a sister and, city. Yes, and they happened. thought how cute it would be <laughs> if the two suburbs would get together. So 35 years ago, they did this. Our sister city has been active since then, there are times a little slower and other times a little faster, but we do um, several things. Number one, we have an exchange program because we have two Japanese programs in Gresham, Gresham High School and Reynolds High School, and the kids take Japanese language. Mm -hmm. So we host three kids in January from Japan, from Ebitsu, for a month. Then we have three of our kids go to Japan mm. for a month in June. That's great. Then That's we, a super experience it, for them, oh, isn't it? And they come back and they're so excited, of course, yeah. yes, and the cultural exchange is good. Then, of course, we have our um, Sudo Island, which is our Gresham Japanese Garden, which we're in the, trying to renovate. In fact, spring's coming, so if you can, come on out. It's really nice. So that's down at Main City Park Main City in Park. And then our third project started out very small last year called Skosh, a little Japanese. Last year, that was it. This year, it's Skosh, a little Japanese children's festival and cultural fair. Oh, well, it's expanded then. Huge. So last year was the first year. What was going on last year at this event? Last year we actually started out, we were going to use it as a board meeting. So I was hoping to get five presenters and maybe 50 guests. Okay. We ended up going to Great Aggression Baptist Church and we had 25 presenters and over 100 volunteers. Wow. It and was, a few guests. Mm -hmm. and yeah. <laughs> yes, and a ton of guests. So then this year we decided that we would move to a, a site that we could have it on Saturday. Okay. So on May 11th, from 10 to 3 at Mount Hood Community College, we put together a program with the Mount Hood Community College Japanese Club. Oh, And they're doing perfect. the children's program, and we as Gresham Sister City, Ebutsu Japan, will do the cultural part. Oh, that's great. So what, what do you expect to get out of this? What, what is the, the, 
the whole point of having this yeah. festival. Obviously, it's not a board <laughs> meeting anymore. No, <laughs> my main thing, um, I'm a, I tell everyone I'm a born again Japanese. <laughs> I was raised totally in a white society and mm -hmm. didn't do much as far as Japanese was concerned because the internment had happened and my folks didn't want us labeled Japanese. I mean, duh, big surprise. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know. but it wasn't something that was celebrated no. in your And family. so no was... Japanese language classes or anything like oh, that were wow. happening anymore. So I went through, and it wasn't until I graduated actually and started working, and my dad, I was afraid he wouldn't have any Japanese friends when my mom passed away. So I took him to the Oregon Buddhist Temple uh -huh. and figured, found out that he was very well respected in the community, had done a lot, and then I decided I better figure out the fact that I'm not Tomiko Smith, you know, yeah, that I yeah, actually had a yeah. little difference. And so then I started studying the culture, and I wanted to share it with people in, in the East County. Sure, And sure. that's how it all started. It was just wanting to mm -hmm. share a I little bit of our, right. a skosh. A skosh means a little. Uh, a, yeah, little. a little. And yeah. so we started out with just, you know, very, very little going on. I think that's great, though. And I think yeah. it's wonderful that you're embracing your heritage now because mm -hmm. it's so sad to lose mm -hmm. that. And mm -hmm. especially because of the awful circumstances that, that preceded that. So I'm glad to see yes, you're doing yes, that and sharing yes. it with the rest of us. Mm -hmm. So um, this year, um, Dennis, you're, you're on the committee, you're a teacher. Uh, what, what have yes, you been working on? Yes, I'm kind on? of a rookie here in, <laughs> in the association. I started out, well, what happened was uh, I read a little article in the Gresham paper that they put out uh, talking about this garden and how it was going to be renovated. And it was the Japanese garden. The Japanese garden. garden right, and, which yeah. was sort of under, um, Weeds and brambles right. and was sort of not kept up and had that gorgeous. It was a stuff. nice camping area. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, it had that lovely bridge there. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and I think the problem was the the original people that built it uh, couldn't stick around to maintain it over right. the long haul. So nobody and was so, working on yeah, it anymore. Yeah, and they're so intensive. But anyway, um, I called Tomiko and I said, you know, that sounds. I've been to Japan a couple of times ah. and I really like gardening. And I said, maybe I can help out. So I went over and. Uh, Jim Card, who was the landscape designer who was leading this, was there and told me, go, and I hauled a few rocks around, and I said, hmm, I'm getting kind of old at making <laughs> this There's some so big rocks. Jim said, do you want to take there. some pictures? We want some before and after pictures. So I started doing that and then talking to Tomiko and found we were very close. And when we grew up, and, uh, she went to Madison, I went to Park Rose. Oh, and, yeah. And uh, yeah, so, but anyway, uh, so she plugged me in here to get my producer's uh, credentials. This is how you became one of our volunteers here. She says, we're doing skosh and we want to cover it. And so and so you videotaped the video event last year. Videotaped, we got year. a crew together and videotaped it. Yeah. Good job, good job. I see a little plug to... for Metro East there too. Yeah, oh. so we're going to do. And the classes were fabulous. Oh yes, yes. I'm in the remedial I... track, so I have, <laughs> to, <laughs> I have yeah. to keep taking them. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much where we're at now. Yeah. We're going to do it again this year and hopefully put some some uh, something together, depending on you know what we when we review it and see what's going to work. We may combine uh, both events, um, parts of both events, and by both pieces. events you mean the, Bo the, the both years. I'm oh, sorry. okay, yeah, okay, I see, yeah. I see. Yeah. So what um, the the college is doing the children's part of it. Mm -hmm. What what exactly can people expect at that? Do you know what they have in mind, or have you heard yet? Is that all a big secret? Well, and they have to I find out when you go there. I think someone else was supposed to be here to talk about that, right? <laughs> and I, uh, and okay. I didn't get the word. <laughs> okay, so it'll be a surprise. It, it'll, yes, it, there's a real nice area, so it'll be um, near the student union, mm -hmm. and then the whole area in the back, which is like a park, okay. and they'll be doing origami and paper puppets. Let's say she knows some yes. of Yeah. And yeah. so I'm not sure everything. Japanese arts and crafts. Yes, yes. Japanese arts and yes. crafts. And all of yeah. it will be led by the students in the Japanese club. Oh, that's great. That's it is. Great. It really is. We have some pictures, I think, from last year's event. Mm -hmm. Maybe we mm -hmm. could take a look at those and you can mm -hmm. tell us what, what we're looking at and what some sure. of the things that you did last year. No, no, okay. Well, that's a good one. Okay. <laughs> then um, tell me a little bit about the, the cultural affairs part of it. Pretty much it's, um, we have the all the regular stuff, mm -hmm. you know, bonsai, tea, ceremony, kibana. Uh, big one, of course, is Portland Taiko will be coming, and they're huge. That's the drum, drum mm -hmm. unit, right? Mm -hmm. They okay. actually started in Portland many years ago, and the first group that began actually made their own drums. Oh, wow. I mean, and so this they're group They're very is, well known. They're very well known, and now, of course, they even have not just the artistic director in Michelle Fuji, but also they have a 
dance court, dance teacher, and he's actually a folk dance teacher and mm -hmm. was trained in Japan, wow. Toru Watanabe. And so we're oh, very oh, humbled to have great. him come. And then Mitsuki Daizai, who plays the koto, which is a 13-string instrument. Usually we sit on our knees on the floor. Do you play so it? I took lessons with her, again, pretty remedial, but um, <laughs> uh, I, can remedial play, lessons. I can play Mickey Mouse Club, because she <laughs> did all American music with me, because really? I'm not, yes. And so we have her, but a few different things we have. We do have, yes, <laughs> M-I-C-K-E-Y, M-O-U-S-E. I love it. Uh, we have a, a lady who's yeah. going to do Japanese feng shui architectural oh, yeah. medicine in American homes. Oh, that's, very that's going to be popular. Then we do have also um, uh, two ladies are going to do what we call onigiri, or rice balls, rice sandwiches, and of course oh, we'll do the yeah. famous spam musubi, which Hawaiians eat like yes, they mother's do. milk. Yes, yes, they do. They love and their then, spam uh, and their rice. Yeah, rice, yep. we'll have a, a really large area this year on the internment of the Japanese oh, American good. because our people are getting older and, and they no, are they, people don't know that's about right it. Mm -hmm. and they're standing up so first we have Christina McMorris who is a best-selling author okay. and she's written um, letters from home in bridges bridge of scarlet leaves and it's about fictional internment people she'll be there but based on based mm -hmm. on fact and, yeah yes. and then historical fiction right okay and then I she like will sell books, books and then we have... And those books are sort of geared toward um, young adults, is that yes, right? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yeah. And they're very readable, very yes. readable. I had to get them in big print, but they're very readable. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, John Nakata and Henry Sakamoto, who are local people, will speak about their story. John is from California, so his experience was much different. And then we have a group of men who were in Minidoka internment camp, and they'll do a discussion group. And where was that located? And that yeah. was in Idaho, in over Idaho. by Jerome. Okay. And then we have a girls group, and this took me, Dennis can laugh, because it took me until day before yesterday to even get one woman to come up. Really? And so we have the um, one woman who was a senior in high school. She did teaching in the camps. We have a lady wow. who actually chose to go out of the camp and go to the farm labor uh -huh. farms and things like that. So, so this she week, was in the internment. Yes. She was living there. But okay. she went to the she camp instead, so she didn't have to stay in the internment. Wow. Our biggest coup is that we have a computer area that will plug in to the Dencho Project, which is out of Seattle, and they have interviewed over 2,000, about 1,500 to 2,000 of the Japanese Americans who were interned, oh, and wow. it's archived. So wow. you can go in and say, Thomas Takuchi, my dad, uh -huh. and if his oral history is there, it'll come up and you can view it. Oh, that's great. It's, that that's so great. important to, yeah. to not yeah. lose all that history, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Tomiko is such an energizer bunny. She's got all this stuff <laughs> in her head. And, you know, when we talk, she's going a mile a minute. And she's got this program lined up. It's much larger than last year. There's uh, so many more things <laughs> going yeah. on, and it's kind of spread out a larger venue at Mount Hood. So Good. it's... it's, it's <laughs> so what are you looking forward to most, Dennis? What am I looking forward to? <laughs> Well, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing there, actually. So are uh, you going to have somebody taking pictures this year? Yeah, and, uh, yeah well, I'll, actually, I will. I hope to take a lot of still pictures, yeah. and we'll have yeah. a crew there shooting video. Good, From good. Amy. Um, good, good. Yeah, yeah. Good. So, um, yeah. Good, it's, that's it's wonderful. So be, we can look forward, for those who are not fortunate enough to be able to attend, they can watch yeah. on the Metro East channels and sure. find out what they right. missed and plan for next year. Right. And yeah. then he's got a lot of stage background, so um, I'm... That's another area where I'm remedial. Man, I'm remedial in a lot of stuff. You know, gotta give yourself credit, Amigo. You're good at <laughs> yeah. a whole lot of stuff. But he had to walk me through because I don't understand mics and things. So he understands that. So he's doing videoing. He's doing the still photos, and he'll be in charge of the theater and keeping. Oh, but he doesn't so, yeah. know what he's going to be doing. Yeah, while but he's, he's there. Not yeah, sure. it doesn't sound like much of anything, Dennis. It's. Uh, <laughs> hey, but it's better than moving boulders, isn't it? Pants. Yes, <laughs> it is better than moving boulders. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> but he's, he can see the big picture, so he can see kind of what we have going. And the areas are huge. We have the main theater, and then there'll be some artist displays in the front. We have potters, and we have um, Setsuko Gion, who does that Sumi Degashi, which is ink marbling, Sumi ink marbling. And she's also going to do a session. Explain that to me, Sumi ink marbling. She I takes the Sumi means. ink and puts it in water. Then she uses a resin that splits it to make a design. Uh -huh. Then she puts her paper down, lifts it up, and then she'll write in sumie and then draw in. Wow. I mean, it's lovely. It's oh, just wow. She's going to be demonstrating that this year? Yes. That would be really So we year have she had her work, but she right. didn't actually do the demonstration. We have four classrooms, and there will be five sessions. 
So we have haiku, which is right. uh, the poetry. We have bonsai, yes. <laughs> we have she's going to do sumi nagashi. We also have calligraphy. And then we have, of course, cooking. And so we have the sushi and this type of thing. I'd and be then a taster. Gracie, Gracie <laughs> Chicao will do tea ceremony again. Tea ceremony. She'll do three oh, sessions, and she's great. oh, and she's just amazing, you know. And then we have that huge display room, and in that we'll have, you name it. And basically, we're going to have bunka, which is um, embroidery. Mm -hmm. And the gal who teaches in Seattle is coming down to do a demonstration, and also to show some of her work. We have 3D origami. Jean Takashima does 3D origami. She has this it's ship. It's all origami. Well, I it is. It was, I mean, yeah, that's it's all folded, and mm -hmm. it's a ship like this. And she has these cranes. Oh, wow. <laughs> and they're all done with little cranes that she folded and then put together. <laughs> I don't know how she does. So they're ask. all little cranes, but they make it into a ship? Oh, wow. It's just oh, the most yeah. amazing. <laughs> and then she has these teeny little turtles. And I'm not showing off my green nail polish. I like them, though. <laughs> Your green green turtle nails. <laughs> That's oh. great. Yeah. She makes these little turtles, and they've got little teeny cranes that go together, or little teeny origamis that oh, go together and make it. Yeah. Oh, and so cute. we have that. And then uh, one of the gals, uh, Karen Schreich, she is going to bring her mom's kimono. She has five, one being mm. a wedding kimono. Oh, and so beautiful. they'll be on display. Oh, what wonderful things. There's so much beauty in the Japanese culture. The, the, the tea ceremonies, mm -hmm. the writing, the, you know, it, Mm -hmm. It's just, um, mm -hmm. it's very gracious, gracious and graceful. Mm -hmm. That's how I kind of think of it. That's wonderful. Yeah. I think that sounds yeah. like And a, then for a little fun, we have Jose Spoonberger, who is... That doesn't sound <laughs> Japanese. Jose Spoonberger. He's, he's actually... I don't think he looks Japanese either. No, and he does clowning, actually. But yeah. he took Koto with myself, with Mitsuki. So he's got about three, yeah. he's got about five Kotos, but he's bringing like three of his Kotos. One is a Chinese one, and he'll actually let everyone play oh, and wow. try it. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know, right. a and hands it is on. yes, so a little hands on. Then we have a guy who will be there. The it's actually a a go group, go being that board game with the white and black pebbles. Oh yeah, I I've never, never oh I've never figured that out. But I like to put them in pretty designs. <laughs> <laughs> if and it makes you happy to be gone, right. okay. With and then Donna Yamashita Hanlon is going to be doing Hanafuda, which is a card game that has all these pictures, and I'm not certain how you do it. It's a little bit. But so she'll be teaching. <laughs> no, yeah. But you can sit there, and she'll teach you, and then you'll be able to play some. Oh, so there's things like that cards. happening. Yeah, stuff like that. Wow. And then we will have our exchange students. So the two girls who went last year to Japan, oh, they'll be there to talk and about. And the three it. families that we're hosting this year, and the three kids who are going in the mm. future, this next. This will be a good. Uh, will be there this will too. Be a good introduction to them. Right. What, right. So, so there's a variety expect. of things. So yeah. the people, so the kids that went last year, there were two kids that went last year. Yes. And and have you talked to them? Have we did. In fact, we put a display together because we're really looking for help on funding. Uh, <laughs> because these kids. That was a hint, <laughs> folks. Seven. Yeah. The, the, right now, the airfare is seventeen hundred dollars, and they do have Ooh, to. Ooh, that's they ha a lot yeah, of money. So we're trying to figure out. So we did go to a, the Optimus Club, and they did a presentation. It was fabulous. The one gal, uh, Victoria, actually came in her uniform that they gave her. She went to a private school. Oh, so really? she had her display and her uniform looked so cute and then a PowerPoint. Nice. And then Ashley who went also didn't have a uniform but she made her display board. She was an exchange student plus she was a host person. Oh, okay. So, so she, she was had on both her sides display with both both oh, parts. Oh, that's great. And they're ready to go put the show on the road they said. Nice. So they'll be well. They have that with them, and they'll yes. have their PowerPoint, and have the yes. display board, and all yes. that. Yes. Yeah. Good. And then good. the other three uh, that are going to be going are doing some really neat things. There, um, we're going to have a Burgerville night, May eighth, I believe it is, and the Gresham Burgerville will assign a percentage of whatever money they make that night that will go to the three kids going to Ibbetsu. Good. Burgerville's great about yeah. doing that. Yeah. Kind of I thing. was. I am just They're amazed really at the community. That. Thank you, community. I'm just amazed. Isn't that wonderful? You know, we're, we've been given so much, and we um, are looking for, we have a, we'll probably have about 200 volunteers. So That's we're trying to, and we have no money for food. I didn't think of getting food, just honorariums and things. So 
We went around and Safeway's been very generous. Sherry's, oh my gosh, and Jazzy Bagel, thank you a million times. <laughs> um, right. So we're yeah. looking for some fruits and vegetables and things too, you know, yeah. so we can feed yeah. these people. Yeah. But yeah, but the community has been just oh, absolutely marvelous. Wonderful. And if people are interested in making any kind of a donation, monetary or, or, or otherwise, yes. um, but monetary is always good. Yes, then, oh, yes. Um, go to the Sister City uh, website. Mm -hmm. Is that mm -hmm. the best way to go? Okay. Mm -hmm. And are you still in need of volunteers or are you pretty good on volunteers now? We can always use volunteers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And on, if you see a Scotch poster, anything away, I can't even give you the. Oh, the Scotch poster has the um, email, the Gmail I think address. We've got the Scotch poster, so we'll put that up on the on the camera. But um, but yeah, it, it, but you can go to the website, Paul. Yes, you can go to the website. Yeah. So yes. The Scotch is spelled S K O S H. There we go, is right there. There it is, and there's S the website on the bottom. Okay. At, yes. Okay. It'll be. You can't see it there, but we'll. Um, It'll be on the website, so we'll go to the go to your website, and we'll be and we'll have that up on the screen at the end yeah. of the show. Um, yeah, well, Gresham we, Sister City Association org or net. Okay, good. Okay. That's going to be a fun event. It is going to be so May eleventh, which is a Saturday from ten a.m. to three p.m. at Mount Hood Community right. College, and mm -hmm. it's free. It is, which free. is the best price ever. That's right. right. The only thing is that um, uh, I believe Bamboo Grove is going to cater the food and. That okay. would be, but be a, yeah. Well, it's fair enough. I mean, <laughs> but I everything you're, else, you're getting I mean, a whole lot for a whole, oh, for nothing. Portland so, Tyco. I mean, yeah, that's a check big deal. out them online. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a big deal. Right. Well, thank you both of you for being on here. As a rookie, I think you're doing quite well, Dennis. Um, thank you, Monica. <laughs> <laughs> to be Trying awesome. to keep up with her. Has I, something I know. Else. You're right. She's the Energizer Bunny. It's always but, great to see you, Tomiko. So, oh, um, look forward. Hopefully, I'll be able to, to attend and see you there. That sounds like a fabulous event, and I'm so glad that last year exceeded your expectations. This year, I hope it does the same. I know. If it does, we might have all of uh, East County there. Woohoo! Mm -hmm. All right. Well, the second annual. It sounds like it's on its way to, to being a, a regular annual. Thing. Oh. Yeah, I know you oh. need to rest up in between. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching Community Hotline tonight. My name is Monica Weitzel. I hope you enjoyed tonight's show, and uh, I hope to see you again next week. Thanks for watching.